going down and up and down and going around these places. My wife in the back of the helicopter screaming and I'm like <laughs> hanging from the co-pilot door with a strap with my camera, almost falling from the helicopter, <laughs> shooting all these oh things. I'm like, well, another one, another one. And we got this amazing footage. Yeah. So that, one, okay. I, that one, I just took a, a single frame and took some foreground element, but it's a moving shot on, on the trailer. That's a nice one. That's a cute one. Very, very, very quickly done. Very painterly, I would say, but. Yeah, so was I, I, this, because you're, you're using a lot of 3D in this? In the actual shot, yes. I mean, in this in this particular single frame, I remember just, because it was the, the, the background, one of the projections on it. So um, I kind of like make something up for the single frame presentation, but the, the actual shot, moving shot, it was a fully 3D scene. I rendered it in V-Ray, I remember. And I just I just threw a bunch of like layered elements and like ground projection and some assets into Nuke for that one and did a lot of like cards with you know fog and things out of nuke I, I mean i will have to look i will have to dig for the shot i don't remember very well so and, is this uh, the image that we're looking at currently is this what the final shot looked like or is this no, the pre trailer shot that's the trailer shot yeah that, oh, okay. not, that, that didn't look at all like the original like the final one i mean you can look at you can look at the one in the movie you'll be like yeah well it's quite different yeah yeah, I remember that it was a beautiful shot to do and a lot of, I mean, it was huge resolution on that one. So it looks very nice in the trailer. We were talking about colorists and grading butchery. Yes. Uh, so I actually I brought it in here because I wanted to show the listeners the difference. Oh, yeah. So you, you can get, see you right see here. The original. Yeah, yeah, you see the original here versus that. Well, that's it's... pretty much all originals. And then you see that one with the super blues and yellowish brownish. Yeah. That are degraded like after the, from the printed it, movie. It's crazy. It's like, like, yours looks so much more natural, realistic, and then you get this super blues. And like, yeah, man. They, they overdo it. It's just too heavy handed. It's crazy. it's crazy. And you know what? The thing is that, yeah, digitally created content doesn't have the same capacity to be graded like to the fakery of color. Like when you take a piece of image, a photograph, right? Uh -huh. You can just chunk, you know, crank the, the hues, the saturation, and it kind of holds, I don't know. It might look crappy and all, but it can, you still believe it's a photo, right? I think when you're doing a digital environment, you can be, I mean, you can be as much close as a photograph as you can, but it doesn't really receive very well the abuse of, of color grading afterwards. Like you're in a, the range of messing with it is much smaller. I don't know why I think that. Even the um, values that, change too after. Everything, yeah. Everything and changes. you see how lifted the things in the foreground are? Yeah, everything. Like, I suffer like, a lot. With, I suffer a lot with that one on the shot because the camera is coming from a from a cave, uh -huh. and the characters and they want this like thing super nicely exposed, and the characters are like backlit, like back exposed, like a lift light behind them. And I remember somebody just telling the poor comper, just keep lifting them, keep lifting them, right? And I was like, no, we need to have some. And at the end, what you end is like you end with these guys super lifted, and then your background is like unlift, like you know, like darkness. Yeah. 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 And you don't have any kind of like, a, you don't have the feel of like overexposure happening. Yeah. And that shit kills me. Like, that's oh, like. It breaks your heart, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I know. I mean, one anecdote as, as I'm a former painter. So I mean, look, can you open one of those? Yeah. I mean, that's the wide uh, projection of that one. So I, you have I, all this water, water in here and then the waterfalls. So oh. did you paint the waterfalls or is this CG? It, that's something we did with a guy called Anton Grishenko, FX guy from Ukraine, a good friend of mine. I pretty much modeled the whole thing, right? I, I stole the, the city elements from the main assets we had for the movie. And I had to strip them out of all the detail because these things were designed for like up close. Yeah. So yeah, they were yeah. crazy, right? Almost like remake it out of the original assets. It took me a, a while. This shot particularly requires its own podcast of what happened <laughs> you know, behind the scenes. <laughs> it's like unbelievable what happened in this shot. We'll call but, it the, uh, the, the Hobbit the podcast. podcast. All right, we'll no, yeah, I was like, uh, I don't want to burn my bridges that deep. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, I mean, this shot was done, a, a final in, I can tell you this, it was final in the third take, third in my painting take, and it took me four weeks. And this whole thing uh, took you four weeks? Yeah. Wow. In three takes. But on that shot, something like four weeks, but were you working like a hundred hour like, weeks? You know? Yeah, but yeah. Uh, also on this shot, something like 30 people work for like, I don't know, 12 weeks. It's just that oh, that that you didn't get to see it on the final. You got to see the, the, the third take of the DMP version of it. Oh, after, okay. After four weeks of actual work on the way we did it. It was like a two-approach two type of situation. Lots of problems with the way, I mean, the pipeline was designed at the time. These type of shots are like one-offs, right? 
and the pipelines are like you couldn't we couldn't uh, like company wise I mean pipeline wise certain things just couldn't be made at that scale at that like it doesn't matter if it's this every asset is designed for like a close and even if you have LODs and things like that you're still loading massive things amount of things so at the end it's like a map painting approach is the best for this kind of like wide one-offs right if you zoom in a lot and this, I can show you, I can tell you about the water. Yeah, see, yeah, this is as big as I was able to grab. If you have the original file, the, my site can take any scale, any resolution. So yeah, if you upload a big the, one, but I don't know how big it will be. If you um, upload the original, I can definitely. Um, but I mean, you start to zoom in anyways, uh, even if it looks crappy. Oh my God, no, please. That. <laughs> it's just painful. So what, so what we did is that I gave Anton my geometry, right? And I kind of, kind of custom made some of the, some of the elements so the water will break cool, you know, nicely and all. And I gave him the geometry and he, he actually rendered out the simulation using the projection camera as well. So I then in, in Nuke, gigantic image, I started comping the, the simulation elements, you know, into my paints, like a painting element, but with animation into it. And then like for some of the, the main water bodies and the big waterfalls, and then I started adding some of the, with Anton also, we did a few more waterfalls, random stuff, like from a bullshit, you know, construction of stones. So he did like a bunch of multiple types of waterfalls, like sideways, frontal, stuff like that. And I started picking, I, I will pick them up and I will, just like in Photoshop, just, you know, scale them down, squeeze them, move them, distort them, and put them in behind my painting elements and use alphas in Photoshop to cut out the waterfalls where I want them to be. And then like some mist elements, like, you know, like we had some, you know, comp library of mist elements. I start throwing them in small elements there around and mix them about. But it was, I mean, it was all really like crazy, old school waterfalls falling and and. and well, uh, how do you get the water, the, the water to animate then? Hey guys, just a reminder: you can actually find the full interview down below and our Discord server, where you can hang out with other concept artists, environment artists, map painters, game artists, and you just talk shop, hang out, problem solve together, and give tips and tricks. And let's continue. Well. The thing with the simulations, like I will get, I will ask Anton, for example, to, can you give me like maybe, I don't know, six waterfalls. So I'll give him six geometries of like any piece of the structure, right? And he will just render the waterfall, you know, with an alpha. And he will render oh, okay. the sequence of the waterfall. Ah, I see, I see. But I it's see. just like, so a, have... like, a, like, a, like an asset, like a, yeah, yeah. Like, a, like a stock. Yeah. So I will take that stock and I'll, then I'll kind of like chop it in pieces where I and want it to be. Put it together and in Luke. Yeah, in Nuke, and oh, they all okay, just mask out stuff. So this shit had a lot, of, lots of little rotos and lots of little distortions. That's and, cool. And so speed ups. I, I, I mean, like it speed... feels good when it's your shot, right? Like basically, like this whole thing is yours. You get a sense of pride. Like I'm proud. I'm proud. I'm, I'm proud of that one. I, I think it's. I mean, without the plate, <laughs> it looks great. And I mean, I wanted to go far with some elements, and I was also always kind of like I had to compromise a lot on you know beauty kind of like you have to be more down to earth in, in, in multiple things right i like the distant stuff and, and i mean there was com there was compromises in the way the city was built of course i couldn't change things like that but i think we got like if you if you look at the details around the stones and stuff it's like it's a beautiful shot it works really well i mean the things we did that with anton getting water simulation like in a single frame in a single camera you know projected i mean projected yeah. Word simulation animation on top of a painting and then just blending it with the painting. That's <laughs> just crazy stuff with it. And then some more, like maybe 80% of it is like just a render, uh, stay render from, from uh, V-Ray at the time, it's just V-Ray. And then 20% of like just adding Photoshop elements and trees and stuff and having cards in, in Nuke. And the background, it's interesting that that reference elements, is, well, it's a construct of pieces of, of, of a place, but during the beginning of The Hobbit, we did the scouting trip for, I mean, like a photographic reference trip with Chris White, the supervisor of the sequence, and, and, and you know, official photographer, and I was sent there as a map painter. And we went to this place called Punakaki National Park. It's the, it's the location they've shot the original, you know, reference material for the for Rivendell. And we went there and, and, and we shoot some pictures. We stayed in a hotel. We went, you know, we did like a couple of scouting days of that. And it was always overcast. Like half New Zealand, South Island of New Zealand is half of the time overcast. So I was like, fuck, I need, what, what, and we need to do this sunset stuff, like sunset all the time, sunset. And I was like, yeah, I remember production work. I mean, can you make it up with the, you know, overcast things and try to grade them to look like sunset? And I'm like, that shit is, I mean, I can try. I remember being very stressed about it. And we went back to the office. I started working on some uh, test shots for uh, one of the other big shots on that sequence. And it was just, 
horrible. I couldn't, I couldn't get the sunset. I mean, maybe like you were joking, maybe do so could do that. I couldn't get the sunset out of this, you know, overcast crappy stuff. And, and, and just, it's just unforgiving, you know, today is that like we're working at 4k, 8k, I mean, this thing, this paints like 8k, you know, resolution. Yeah. So, and people are seeing this thing in these super high quality, super sharp screens. You don't, you don't get away with painting out, you know, grading highlights in a sunset anymore and trying to make it blue, get the values right and on the shadows. It's just, it looks like shit, right? And I'm um, like, I need to go back. I need to go back to this park. I keep telling production, I need to go back to this park. And production is like, well, we can't, and we don't, we don't have a budget for that. We don't have the time for it. You know, I'm like, I, I'm like, I don't care. I go alone. I mean, just <laughs> give me some, you know, <laughs> and uh, nothing, man. And um, my wife was, I think, what year was this shit? I think my wife was, my wife was already uh, pregnant of my, of my son, maybe a, a few months pregnant. And, and I saw like on the weather, I just keep watching the weather. It's like, I'm, I'm going to go on my own. I don't give a fuck. And, and I saw like a weekend that it was like sunny. Like just no cloudy, no clouds in that national park. I it, it was this is far from Wellington, and I'm like, I, I arrived on Friday and I told my wife we're going tomorrow on an adventure, <laughs> like the <laughs> hobby. <laughs> and she's like, where are we going? Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> we're going to cross the fucking Middle Earth. And I took my wife and we took the ferry out in the very early in the morning on Saturday or something. Drove 12 hours in the fucking half of the South Island to get to this place. We arrived at the midnight. We were, we had to sleep in the car and the beach. She was beaching all the time. She was like, I mean, she was freezing. And then she's like, I'm praying and I'm freezing. What the fuck? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, we gotta, you know, I gotta take these pictures. Yeah. So <laughs> five in the morning, we were out making coffee in the fireplace and shoot and, and hitting the road to get these bottom, sh you know, shots of this place in the early morning with a beautiful light. Right. And I got amazing reference material. I have it in art station. And, and then we did, we did from the fucking ground, we did hiking, we did kayaking, and then we did sunsets. And then the next day is like, I need this, I need this shit. I need aerials. Oh. And my wife is like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I need to get an helicopter. <laughs> and I, and I, and we found an helicopter service in, in a town nearby. We drove a couple wow. of hours. That's fun. Uh, it yeah. sounds like fun. No fun. Uh, all, I had to pay all my own. Oh God! Uh, because I, no people just wouldn't. I mean, people, everybody's in their thing, right? And nobody will understand what you need uh, sometimes. And yeah. and you can sit there and suffer about it, or you can just do something about it. So well, it just sucks uh, that you had to pay for it out of your own pocket for all this. Well, I, I was fine. I mean, it didn't give a fuck. It's like thousand, <laughs> I don't know, like thousand five hundred bucks and make up the ride. And uh, <laughs> I mean, the thing is that I mean that saved the sequence for me. That yeah. saved the sequence. Right. I mean, uh, you know, supervisor was, you know, absolutely happy and, and grateful for that. I mean, everybody in the team was super happy with that. And I mean, production will, I mean, could, I don't know, do nothing about it, but I, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I need to do, do. Yeah, I need to do it because <laughs> fuck it. I'm not going to be, you know, suffering some painting shit out of a cloudy reference. So yeah, we took the helicopter the next day and, and we found the perfect sunset, you know, a perfect afternoon lighting in this. And this guy went into the helicopter to these gorges of kind of like a jungle is gorgeous and going down and up and down and going around these places. My wife in the back of the helicopter screaming. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like <laughs> hanging from the co-pilot door with a strap with my camera, almost falling from the helicopter, <laughs> shooting all these oh things. I'm God. like, well, another one, another one. And we got this amazing footage and I put some of the pictures on another station. And I, yeah, I, I got back to the office and I, I, I was like, here you go, guys. This is it. We have, we have material for, uh, for sunset stuff. <laughs> and the shit just, exp I mean, quality of the, of what we're doing exploded immediately. I mean, the, the unsung mo the, hero, the best to spend money. We can talk about the technicalities of shots a lot, but there's also a lot of interesting human factor happening behind. Yeah. Scenes. Like, I mean, no one Mission. would have known about this, right? So <laughs> people are watching the movie, they're thinking, oh, they just built it. But it's like, you came to like, you literally saved the shot. It sounds like. <laughs> so, like, because you actually had the balls and initiative to go and do this because, you know, like you said, you, you have to get take, it done. Yeah. You have to get it done. And, yeah. And, I mean, yeah, this is the thing about like jungle map painters, you know, it's like, oh, oh, like I don't, I don't move here. I don't get the, no, you gotta, you gotta go. I mean, you gotta do whatever it takes. Yeah. I mean, it did contribute very much. I mean, eventually we'll have found, found another solution or not, but nobody should stay quiet waiting yeah. for something to be sorted out by, by other people or by bureaucracy or by just desperation. You have to mm -hmm. go and 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 do whatever it takes really yeah and yeah in this sequence we did whatever it took to get it done and, and it came out beautiful i mean you know yeah. without counting with the, the coloring afterwards but <laughs> <laughs> no it's, it's it's sick when you're making this image what do you, what process do you use to 
you know, make it all consistent with the the highlights and the and the blacks. Are there any like tricks or hacks or cheat codes you use basically for getting everything to be sitting in the same space, color wise? Mm. And value. I mean, that just that just I mean, mainly comes out, you know, from from keeping a really good eye on hues, right? Yeah. And, and that requires a lot of masking around and and, and tweaking, you know, micro tweaking hues. Yeah. You know, a little more brown, a little a little more colored than this, a little more cold than this. But also very important is to use to use a reference, a photographic reference element uh, you keep around with you, right? You can sample from. And one thing that I try to sample a lot from is that just guys find a good picture that a good photograph that looks like it's well taken photograph. Yeah, you know, that is not that is not terribly graded or you know manipulated. Yeah. Afterwards, yeah. and then and use that as a, I keep it as a small thumbnail on the side, and I use that as a as a as, a, as like an overall value guide. And then I start working on, on you know I, I work at values based on depth. So I, I've kind of like you know I've, I'm very careful with how the blacks you know go into the distance, how they how they start lifting you know up, yeah. Yeah. how saturation changes over distance as well, and mostly the you know of course the shaded areas. Coldness versus the highlights. How that, how that, how to keep that warmth realistic and all that is. It's a very subtle thing. So I mean, having a piece of picture just key. I used to have like something. For example, like probably in this shot, I don't remember now. I probably used a piece of those cliffs, like a photo, one one of one of those cliff photos, and I will keep an eye on values of the green. I mean, hues of the greens. For example, in the shade and in the highlights. And for example, I will use probably the stone as a sample for like my default gray or my my default value sample, just something like stone or something, you know, like a 20% gray. You will do probably in, in traditional photography as well. And one old trick we all, we all, I guess we all do is that we oversaturate things to find flaws in a, on, a, on a grade on top, right? On a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a saturation layer on top. I overexposed. Yep. Like madness. That's something I picked up from the ILM. I just overexposed the shit out of to find problems with the blacks, right? Yep. With the, in your darks. So do you do your liftings where you need, do some of the dark, sorry, a lighten layer, you know, to, yep. to pick up, to keep a, at least a consistent darkest black, uh -huh. right? And from there, everything can be lifted, but you don't have nothing going super black or, I mean, like super, you know, like uh, out of place. And then by overexposing you find a lot of issues with with things that are like off place like a, a photographic element that just like seems to be off place you can correct that one but well you can you know, of course you can over, you can underexpose you can saturate you can flip flow whatever but i mean mainly also it's important to use reference material which is consistent i a lot of artists get in shed in, <laughs> in the shed zone you know, like younger artists will get in the shed zone by using like, I don't know, like they use a piece of stone from a fucking place in in Norway, you know, and carefully, or, you know, a piece of stone somewhere in Ireland or whatever, you know, that they, they're doing a jungle thing in Thailand, drugs. so it, happens, it just happens that the limestone, like some knowledge of what you're doing from a, yeah. you know, we were talking about cultivating yourself beyond the image, you you're working on some stones. For example, I use a lot of New Zealand stone or reference elements from specific photo sets. Like I wouldn't go to the to the internet and blow some random shit just because I need a piece of, I mean, you know, in, in some cases you might have to do that. But but most of the time you keep it consistent by you also using consistent element for it. So you piece, yeah, everything in the background on this thing is comes from the same source for a photo set. And most of the stone work and details, for example, come from the same uh, New Zealand photo sets that we you know we, sh we had available at the time but if i start picking up like a piece of stone from another place and suddenly you have these things where you have a painting you know some younger artists will do like i'm a painting cool picture and you have like a beautiful beach and some stone and then some some section of stone looks like limestone and the other section looks like uh you know granite and you're yeah. like some, uh, the eye picks mm -hmm. it up very quickly right yeah. it, it just feels something weird about it because the human eye though might we might not even know nothing <laughs> about uh geology or whatever we, our brain sense that something is off. And of course, a photo taken, you know, a JPEG photo taken with a different type of white balance and I don't know, a different resolution from my old camera, whatever, thrown into there. I mean, you have to be very picky about grading it proper so it doesn't feel off. And if you don't, you might have these inconsistent things and like certain hue on the shade 
will be like re too reddish compared to the hue on the on the red on the you know like I don't know there will be certain back faces on a stone that just look kind of greenish and the, and your main source of information and you have some something that has like a bluish tint or like a like a pinkish tint and that shit to get rid of that shit is just a pain in the ass right so you're gonna go and you're gonna go micro masking some some of those pinks and, and slap them down until they match they they sit together with everything else or you stick to the same pieces of reference i tend to use like a the fewer amount of photos and i pick a lot from those same photos i pick a you know, I probably repeat and, and, and cut sections of the same photo, but by using the same set of photos from the same camera, from the same photo shoot, I, I feel like, you know, like everything is going to feel consistent. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's pretty much it, really. Yeah. No, it's, it's I mean, uh, pretty much what I do. And today we it, have an excuse. I mean, we have so much, so much reference going on now. I mean, in, in that I station. Know. It must have been so hard back in the day. Yeah. It's so hard, man. You got to go find... <laughs> Find find a picture that was more than uh, you know bigger than the two K in, in in Google, man. Oh, this is terrible. Yeah. So no, now you can just download the whole you know proper proper copyrighted you know license yeah. photo shoot of a desert you know by a good camera at four K, five K. In that station, you can find mountains of these things. Yeah. I buy them all the time. It's not very photorealistic, but I mean, if you look at it back, it could have been more realistic. Well, it's a fantasy movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you put some grain on it and, and you're good. So the water over here, was this, this part was rendered by your, the sim, the FX guy? Which part? I don't see anything pointing at it. Well, it's... the bottom water, basically. I mean... Oh, the, the bottom water. Yeah. I mean, yes. I give my whole, all my geometry to, to my friend. Okay. And, and now, now I remember what we did. It's very funny what we did. I mean, uh, Tony's also, I mean, he's a genius too. I don't know. He will take my, my painting and he will project that in his own simulation oh, cool. render setup cool so you get so the reflections he, get, he, he did some tricks stuff. to make yeah. like a proper reflections out of the fucking painting alone uh, we cool. have a 3d scene out of this really we because we we work in completely different platforms he was rendering the water out of the company's you know official pipeline i was doing this thing in b-ray so we will get my painting i remember i probably giving him a some sort of like a fake you know fake ass dome of what yeah. of the pool of something of this thing like similar stuff on the top of it and he would place those things in his setup and, and kick the render in Manuka and get some water, you know, some actual water thing. And then I would just go in with his water and grade it, you know, massage it into my matte painting again, using some of the mask that he gave, he will give me, and then add extra masks and stuff in Nuke and work on the top level of the Nuke projection on the camera, on the image projection. So all, everything on the top is like a gigantic single image with shadows of waterfalls running, right? And that's pretty, pretty, big, pretty big scripts. And then that will go down into the projection, the camera projection, and back to, you know, it's to the skyline rendered, and you'll see mm -hmm. that thing to the shot camera. And, and you have all those things moving for free. And of course, some reflections will look big, will look a bit fake because they wouldn't roll properly, right? But I mean, you will get away with that in, in, in most cases. Yeah. yeah that one, crazy. the one before I loved that. Uh, the one, the one before I loved a lot. This one? Yeah, not I, I, in this one, I didn't do the city. This is like the asset from the late, late lighting department. And you can see actually that first it suffered a lot from, I mean, that's probably maybe, I don't know, maybe it wasn't final. I can't remember because they do a lot of later on, they like put some volumes and things and, and elements. But I mean, the render was coming out, the, the the company's pipeline render, you know, at the time was, you know, suffering from a lot of, I it just it didn't work at distance very realistically. It was mm -hmm. like very dense and they have like, you know, like the, the translucency feeling to it. I mean, and then up close or something, they had they, they will they will produce amazing stuff. But I know that at the time, the, you know, the pipe, the render pipeline that uh, the company was doing, was building, was like work in progress. I mean, it was mm, uh, like developing. So the things have changed a lot since then. But of course, like with the seat itself, that's the actual asset with the actual uh, you know company's assets, and you, you can see the difference in values and sense yeah. of like softness from the city to whatever it is in the map painting. On that one, which is anything behind the buildings, is pretty much a uh, painting. Yeah. The cool thing about this shot is that the camera is actually moving sideways. It's like it's moving left, right from left, in a kind of like a semicircular way, and so the, the whole environment, the whole mountain range, actually is moving. So it has parallax, and I had to make a, I had to make first a very pretty picture, but I also had to split it in shed loads of layers of little pine trees. So all of those pine trees that you see behind the city. 
they actually have parallax and they're like separate elements and then adding the waterfalls. And then oh, have to mo- like a photo model this thing on the side into the yeah. left left side, you know, gorge. Yeah. And have like a sideways waterfall running into it. But all of that has parallax. It's a really nice parallax. It's like a lot of elements in that one. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and it's like a second. I mean, this one really you really enjoy when you see it moving, really, yeah. I would say. No. That's cool. That's the thing about film, right? You get you you put so much time to it and it's on the screen for just like two seconds. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen the movie in a long time either. I mean, either. It's like it brings me like some PTSD or something. Is this one of um, your aerial shots that you took photos of? No, no, no. That's in just the helicopter. Made up. Yeah, no, that's just made up. From, oh, okay. from reference we had, yeah. The one you see, the ones you saw from Rivendell, all of that is the, the helicopter reference. Is there, oh, it's present in one way or another. Um, cool. That was made exclusively for Rivendell. For Rivendell. 